H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Now, how do I do that? So, what I need to do is that here I will do it, I will write down concatenating the string value of global variable A with the integer value of local variable A. Now what do we need to do? Now when you are concatenating the variable global variable A with the local variable A, the resultant value will be in string format. So I will have a string, let us say string D equal to, now I would like to basically concatenate the global variables. The global variable is A. Again, if I put A plus A, the compiler gets confused. It will take this as both the A's as uh, local variables and this is an integer format totally. You are putting it to a variable D which is of string format. That is why the syntax error is shown. So, what do we need to do? I want to use the global variable. So, for this, I need to use a keyword called this, T-H-I-S, this dot, that's all. So that's not working out here. Let's see what is the problem. Cannot use this as a static context. So that means we cannot use this with the static global variable. See, we see out here, it is basically a static global variable. Okay. This global variable A is a static global variable. It is trying to say that this keyword cannot be used in the for a static global variable. So, what do we need to do? If we, for example, remove static and make it as a non-static global variable, then still it is not being accepted by the compiler. So what we need to do, even after converting this to non-static, it is not working. So I can make this static, okay, and <clears throat> what I can do is, Precisely then, if this is not getting accepted, uh, I will have to actually, I cannot use this. So, what I can do is, I can actually, so what is the option that I get if I hover my mouse? over this, I do not get any action, do not get any option to rectify this, okay. So, in this particular context, I have to omit its usage. But then the question lies here is that, how do you add the global variable A with the local variable A out there? So for this, I, so what we need to do is that we are not able to add the global variable A with the local variable A using the this keyword. Actually, the usage of the this keyword will be discussed later on. But in this particular aspect, my deal is basically to add the global variable A with the local variable A and the global variable A is a static 
string type global variable. So what we need to do is that the global variable A belongs to this particular class file. So I will have to copy this class file dot choose the global variable A out here. You see A with global variable. The moment I put dot this pop up comes and this is a global variable A. This has to be added with the local variable A and as, I, as we know this global variable A is of string type you are concatenating it actually with the local variable A is of integer type and the resultant value has to be put to a string let us say E. So, let us now we see that this has turned to light blue that means you are actually adding the global variable not adding this plus sign acts as a concatenation sign you are concatenating this value that is global variable the local variable and the resultant value can be printed out by using the println command and call up e. So, this will throw me 10 20 why the value the variables value that is a global variables value is 10. This will be concatenated with the local variables value that is 20 and that is why I get 10 20 out here. Okay? This is how you do it. Now, this kind of thing is needed, this kind of coding is needed when the variable name for the global variable matches with the variable name defined inside the body of a particular method and that variable is a local variable. So, in this particular context, this is a global variable called A and this is a local variable A. Now, if I want to concatenate these two, I got to understand that I have to use this kind of code that we need to, need to tell that this A belongs to the global variable class. This is the class name. Okay, And then add the local variable A, put it to a string. Why have we are putting to a string? Because of the fact that the resultant value will be in string format and that is why we are keeping in a variable E which is of string type. Okay, The same thing I can basically do with uh, the same global variable A. Now, since I have used the global variable A in this particular method and this is a global variable by itself, global variables can be used across all functions of the same class file or across other classes of the same package or across packages. The dependency is only on the access modifiers. The that I will restrict it for discussion in later sessions. Okay. Now, the understanding is that global variables can be used across all functions. This is, this is one more function called addition. I can use the global variable here also. For example, A is equal to, uh, let us say, hi. I got to put it within the string format. The moment I do that, it turns into blue color. That means I am trying to use this global variable. Global variables is globalized. It can be used across all functions of the class file, across all classes of a particular package, across across packages. But the dependency will be on access modifiers. I am repeating that. And that is not to be discussed in this particular session. Okay. Now, I can also have a local variable A for this particular addition method whose value is equal to 20. And I want to add again. Uh, integer the global variable a with the local variable a and put it to a, a string format. So, string let us say b is equal to global variable a plus local variable a, but the compiler got confused. It is again in black color. Now, the, the syntax array is coming because the resultant value of this local variable is 40 which is an integer format I am putting to a variable which is a string format. That is why the syntax error has been shown. But otherwise the compiler is also confused because both are in black color. That means it is trying to add A twice which is a local variable right now at this point of time. So what we need to do? Define this A as a global variable. For that I have to take the class name. So I will copy the class name from here control C and put it out here. Dot. That's all. This turns to blue. Then I get the 
variable b whose value is string type whose which is of string type now why it is of string type because the, this is the global variable which is concatenated with the integer this plus sign acts as a concatenation operator that is why you are putting it to a variable b which is of string type and then you can use a ciso statement and then call up the variable b out here and then we'll get this particular value so i'm not getting the value the value should be high 20 because this is a concatenation so why it is not being uh, why it is not getting the result in the console because you have created the addition function but you have not called it inside the main method so what you can do is that just come to the main method body control space bar and call the addition function the moment you call it you can save the class file and run it you're going to get this particular value so that's what is defined in the slide 2 the usage of the global variables can be in any functions but it follows the rules of the access modifier so i'm restricted myself to only access modifier which have the static keyword i'm not putting any examples for non static global variables because of the fact that it's part of the oops concept and i will discuss it later on the next thing is about the final global variable that means global variable with the final keyword so let us look at that so as i as we have discussed global variables can have the final keyword that is final let's say integer b now if i do not initialize this particular variable you will get a syntax error you are going to get the syntax error out here and the syntax array is showing you that you are using a duplicate field that means because you are using b out here and b out here so i'll change the variable name to i syntax error goes now the syntax error is that the blank final field may not have been initialized so for a global variable when you are using the final keyword or the final access modifier it is compulsory that you initialize that final global variable if you compare with local variable it is not mandatory that you need to initialize a final local variable remember that so if you do not initialize the final global variable it is going to give us this particular syntax error so what we can do is that we can define the value of it okay similarly I can also have a global variable which can be final static integer j okay since it is static it is coming in dark blue color final static that is why it is coming in dark blue color now, this is to be observed for all other modifiers access modifier it is in light blue for final static it is in dark blue color now, I have not initialized the variable again so for a global variable which is defined with final static access modifier it is also compulsory to define it with the value now if you compare with local variable local variables do not have the static keyword you can only declare a local variable with the final keyword that's all remember that now i can use i and j across all functions in this particular class across classes present in this particular package you can have more than one class in this particular package or across packages but the dependency will be on the access modifier just remember that i'm going to discuss that later on so i can use this i and j in your main method so i can come out here and use uh, i let's say i and i try to declare the value of i equal to 30 now if you see out here it is in blue color that means it is calling up the global variable but there is a syntax error cannot make a static reference to a non static field this is a non static final global variable okay you cannot make a static reference to a non static field okay 
that means it is not allowed. So, how do I get the value of the global variable i inside the main method? Okay. Now, I have told that I will restrict myself to only static global variable. This is non-static. So, I will not declare it at this point of time. Again, when I see the oops concept or we discuss the oops concept, I will come into and discuss about static global variable, non-static global variables. So, I will take the static part right now. So, let us say I call the value of j. Now, I define the value of j as 50. Now, if you see, it turns to dark blue. Just for your final static, the value or the color of the variable is dark blue. Please remember that. Now, the value of this particular final static global variable j, which is the integer type, is 20. Now, I have declared it is 50. What is the problem? Final field global variable cannot be assigned. Once you have assigned a value for a final static global variable, you cannot reassign the value. That is why the syntax error is coming. This syntax error and this syntax error is different. Please understand that. This i is a global variable which has the final keyword. That means it is a final non-static global variable. I am not going to discuss non-static global variables today. That's why I am commenting it. But I will discuss the static final global variable. I am basically changing the value of j to 50 where I have declared it as 20. The Once you have declared a variable which is final static as 20, you cannot change it. You cannot change the value and that is why the syntax error is coming. Okay, You cannot, that is why it is saying that cannot be assigned. That means you cannot assign a value to j once it is assigned out here for a final static global variable. This remains constant. You cannot change it. Okay. So, what do we do? I will comment it. How do I get the value of j? Directly, I have to use siso, sysout and call j. And if I run this particular class file, I will get the value of 20. I can just define it final variable value. Save the class file and I will get the value of 20. The same variable j can be used in the other method that is this one. Now, the value of j that is global variable j which is final static is 20. If I also try to change it in your addition function, let us say to 30, it will show you a syntax error, same syntax, cannot be assigned a value once it has been assigned. So, this kind of stuff comes only for final keywords. Once you declare the value of a variable, you cannot reassign a value again for that particular final global variable. And that is true for a final local variable also. We have seen that. So, I will comment it. And what I can do is that I can use the same sysof statement out here to get the result of the global variable j which is final static global variable. And final variable value I will write down used in addition function. And if I save this class file and run it, this is the value that I will get. Value remains at 20. Sorry, this is the value that I get in addition function 20. Now, why is this coming before? That is because the compiler moves from top to down. Okay, It encounters the addition function before this particular line. So, that is why it will execute the addition functions body and then this particular line. That is why this line of code that is thrown in the console is part of a addition function. That is why it is thrown before and then this is coming out for line number 35 which is coming after line number 31 which has the addition function. That is why the console shows the result in this particular manner.
Now, like I have used the variable a, which is nothing but a default static variable a, I can use the variable c also, which is public static. I can use the variable e also, which is private static. I have told you that I'll restrict myself to static. That's why I'm speaking about static. Okay. I can use g also, which is protected static. I can just use g out here. For example, uh, I can assign a value of g to let's say it's of integer type, protected static integer type. So I can assign the value of g, let's say 200 and it turns to light blue color. I can get the CISO statement and print out the value of g and since it is a global variable it can be used in the other function also that is addition so i can use g also out here so i can assign the value of g out here let's say as 2000 it turns to a light blue color here the value is 2000 in this addition method where the value of g is 200 in the main method okay i can basically get a printout of this s y s o u t g okay now since the addition function is out here the result of the addition function will come and then the result of g used in the main method will come so first 2000 will come then 200 will come so let's save the class file and run it you will see that 2000 is coming first because this is part of your addition function and addition function comes as line number 31 and 200 is part of your line number 38 which is below the addition function since the compiler moves from top to down that is why the result is coming like this so let's see what is remaining so that's all so if you have any questions, you can revert. Thanks for watching the video and thanks for the patience.